love of God, the peace of Christ, and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you one and all. Welcome to this virtual worship service for Church of the Master Presbyterian Church USA, located in Atlanta, Georgia. We are delighted that you've chosen to worship with us on this Lord's Day. Come with us now as we go forth in intentional worship of our triumph God. Greetings. Please join me for our call to worship. Praise due to you, O God, for you answer our prayer. By awesome deeds, you answer with deliverance. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and the farthest seas. Let us worship God. Pray with me, church family. God, please, please continue to teach us to be humble before you so that you can exalt us. We ask that you continue to keep this clarifying mission and order of life foremost in our minds, our thoughts, our actions as we navigate this earth seeking to serve you. We ask that you forgive us for all of our sins, known and unknown. We ask that you continue to reveal to us future sins that we may avoid. And continue to clarify repeated sins that we can correct due to your grace and mercy. As the seasons continue to get settled, it's getting colder, we ask that you keep us warm, keep us alight with your fire. For we know that we all need it. We ask that you keep us safe, continue to grant us a measure of health, and we ask you to give us the buoyancy that we need to deliver your will on this earth. And send the mighty, powerful, unequivocal name of Jesus Christ that we offer this prayer. Amen. Our call to confession. Beloved, even before we admit it, God promises to hear us with mercy. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be heard and forgiven. In penitence and in faith, let us now confess our sins by praying together our prayer 
of confession. Let us pray. No words can express the depth of our need or reveal the extent of our sin. But you know us completely, O God. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our trespasses, you rescue us from evil, and clothe us with love. Humbly we thank you, for no words can express our gratitude for the gift of your salvation. Amen. Amen. Beloved, hear the good news, and it is good news. The news is so good we can scarcely believe it. God does not hold our sin against us, but pours out abundance grace. Give thanks to God for all that God has done and will do in your pardoned lives. I declare to you in the name of the risen one that you are, I am, we are forgiven. Now go and do likewise and be at peace. We turn now to the proclamation of the word portion of our worship service for this Lord's Day. After our prayer of illumination, our scripture readings for today will be as follows. The Old Testament text comes from the Psalter. It is Psalm 65 in its entirety. And the New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Pray with me, please. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. By your Spirit, make yourself known to us through the reading and preaching of your word, that we may be faithful witnesses in this life and joyful companions in the next, even with Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from Psalm 65. Listen for the word of the Lord. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer. To you, all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose. And bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righted deeds. God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and the farthest seas, who form the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where mornings dawns, where evenings fades, you call forth sung songs of joy. You care for the lands of water. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. You drenched its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance 
The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mentioned with grain. They shout for joy and sing the word of the Lord. Our New Testament reading will come from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Listen for the word of the Lord. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Sunday after Pentecost, I bid you peace, joy, and love. The sermon for this Lord's Day finds its basis in the gospel lections from last Sunday and this. To set the table, hear again these words from Luke's gospel. The physician writes, But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. For the next little while, I'd like to speak from the subject, conversation with God. Conversation with God. Pray with me, please. Loving God in the moments to come, make us mindful of your presence. Creator God in the moments to come, through your word, lead us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Merciful God, in the moments to come, free us of all the hurt and pain we've carried to this moment in our worship of you. All-knowing God, in the moments to come, be present with us so that through your word we will be made new again, reborn through your grace. Now, God, for as much as without thee we're not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things that follow direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, today I'd like to begin our time together by relating a story. Before the pandemic, I was at a workshop centering on the teachings found in Colin Pippin's book, Radical Forgiveness. That's Colin Tippin's book, Radical Forgiveness. Present were women from various walks of life, various age groups, occupations, all somewhat accomplished and all focused on doing the work to become their best self. Now, at one point, we entered a P 
period of silence where the leader specifically asks that we still ourselves and connect with God. When the period of silence was over, most folks emerged refreshed and focused. Now, as we entered a break time, a young woman spoke up and said she only connected with God through meditation. She said she did not trust prayer because through her observation, she found prayer to be empty words spoken by people to make themselves feel good about themselves. Empty words spoken by people to make them feel good about themselves. She says she did not trust or ask people to pray on her behalf. Again, not believing the people to be true and genuine. Now, I've got to tell you, her words touched me deeply. We had a good conversation after she spoke And in that conversation, I tried to emphasize that prayer was simply communication with God, intimate communication of God. But but I felt when I left our time together that we as pastors need to do more to help people understand the principles and particulars of prayer. Prayer, that intimate time of communication, that intimate time of conversation with God. Now, beloved, we all know that prayer is the offering of adoration, supplication, lamentations, and confession, and thanksgiving to our God. Yes, simply stated, prayer is communication with God. We also understand that prayer is intimate communication that requires speaking as well as listening. Yes, prayer is conversation. Still in our rush to do what is required when we pray, in our rush to check all the boxes, often we just go through the motions. We're almost road light, not opening ourselves up to true conversation with God. Yes, we do all the talking, but we don't take time for the listening. Back to our scripture, well, Not really back. We're into it now. In last week's parable, we had the story of the widow and the judge. Now, we gleaned from her story that her prayer time with God was so deep and so intimate that it gave her courage. It gave her strength. It gave her tenacity, so much so that when she spoke truth to power, the judge gave in, not out of sense of fairness, But the judge gave in out of fear, fear of the consequences of not doing the right thing about this widow woman. Now, if you take a strong look at the scripture, you'll see it. Our New Revised Standard Version records it as this. Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. That's the New Revised Standard Version. But when you take it back to the Greek and translate it, it comes out something like this. Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, keeping after me, 
I will grant her justice so that she may not finally come and slap me in the face. Y'all know some praying folks like that widow, I'm sure. Yes, you all have stories about how intimate conversation with God brings about change. Change in things, change in circumstances, changes in people because of tenacity, because of praying and hearing and listening to God for your next move. Now we'll move further over into the story. In the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector, Jesus here is telling us something about the quality of our conversation with God. In this parable, we learn that God loves us and appreciates our thanksgiving. God loves our adoration. Even the way that the Pharisee and the tax collector present themselves in prayer using the same posture that David used in Psalm 17 is pleasing in God's sight. Still, Jesus takes this opportunity to remind us that no matter how profound our pleas or how perfect our prose, when it comes to our prayer time with God, hear this now, God already knows it all. God has already seen our heart and God is not impressed with anything less than an humble, genuine, honest conversation. Yes, Jesus is telling us that more than our compliments, God wants to hear our confessions. Yes, Jesus is telling us what he's getting to the is this when we offer our prayers of thanksgiving there should be genuineness there if not if we don't watch ourselves we can get like the pharisee in the story yes all puffed up <laughs> doing more pontificating than honest praying Yes, we can get so caught up in our righteousness, our, our saved and sanctified existence that, that, that if we are not careful, we will be spending our time in prayer telling God how great and wonderful we are. Totally oblivious to the fact that God already knows what our prayer is should be about for indeed god knows what is in our heart our thoughts before we think them our cares before we create them our needs before we know them our actions and our reactions before we make them beloved the story is told about a woman who dreamed she went into a worship service escorted by an angel. She saw the minister of music playing the piano. She saw the choir was singing. The congregation was standing with their hands lifted up high and pray, swaying to the music. But the woman heard no sound. The minister got up to preach. Lips were moving as if speaking, but there was no volume. And in amazement, the young woman turned to her angel escort for an explanation. Then the angel said to her, this is how it sounds in heaven. You hear nothing because there is nothing. These people are engaged in a form of worship, but their thoughts are on other things and their hearts are far away. Hmm. 
Beloved, ask yourself this question. How often do you find yourself in the presence of God, hearing nothing, feeling nothing, learning nothing, because your thoughts are far away and your hearts are not connected with our triune God. Hearts far away, not connected to God. Your body in the presence, but your heart and spirit and your mind somewhere else. How often are you going through the motions of prayer, but you're not fully present? You're not open and available to the presence of God. And most importantly, you're not listening for God. Yes, sometimes our prayers, our conversations with God is like that. We're just going through the motions, saying a few words of thanksgiving, offering pleas and petitions for those near and dear, but we're not really ready. We are not really willing to be in an open and honest conversation with our triune God. Now, now here's the good thing. Being in conversation with God as we make this journey, praying in earnest, listening for God, reminds us that we're not on this journey by ourselves. For indeed, God is always present with us. It reminds us that no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, God is there with us. Sometimes as the creator, sometimes as Jesus Christ, savior and friend, sometimes as the Holy Spirit, suppliers, supporter, supplicator, but always present, always God, always present. Still, beloved, our reality is this. No matter how hard we try to keep it together, no matter how hard we try to stay focused, to stay present, to remain fully aware of the presence of God in our lives. We have moments, yes, we have moments when we drift away, when we lose our focus, when we forget that God is present with us 24-7, 365. Yes, we all have those moments when we start thinking and acting as if we can make it on our own. Those moments when we think that our way might be the right way or even the only way. You know how it is. We do a little good like the Pharisee in our story. We have a few successes. We start reading and believing our own press clippings. Things like, can't nobody do such and such like you? Things like, if it had not been for you doing what you did when you did it, we never could have made it. Or things like, I don't know what you were thinking, but if you had not done what you did, we would not be in the mess that we're in. Beloved, it is in these very human moments that we need to humble ourselves and open up the channels of communication between ourselves and God. And as we open up those channels, we need to do more listening and less talking. We need to be open for the change that God is going to make in our lives. Conversation with God. Beloved, Prayer is communication with God, a conversation with God, which requires some talking and a whole lot of listening. 
It's time for us all to be real and honest. But God is waiting to speak to our hearts. If only we would open ourselves to God's presence. Indeed, that is the challenge in our story for today. The story of the widow and the unjust judge, the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And if you take it to heart, perhaps that's the challenge for the rest of our lives, to be fully present with God in prayer. The challenge is is for us to have an honest and genuine conversation with God where we do some talking and a whole lot of listening. Beloved, my challenge to you today is to be about it, about intimate conversation with God. Strip away all the distractions and be real. I believe if we can do that, if we can have an honest, genuine conversation with God, I think I can guarantee that no matter the circumstance, we will experience positive change. We will experience joy and we will experience a peace that passeth all understanding. And that all by itself would be the good news for today and all the days to come. In the name of the Creator, the Savior, and the Sustainer, amen, amen, amen.
Once again, we'd like to thank you for the generosity that you have shown to the ministry here at Church of the Master. With humility for all God has given us, let us gratefully give to the work of the church, this particular church, and the church universal. Please give. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, we come to you today thanking you for another week that you provided us refuge and shielded us from so many things in the world. You have given us so much, Lord, and we know that we're blessed beyond measure. You have given us all that we need, plus the freedom to choose how to use these things as we see fit and the opportunity to choose your most precious gift, eternal life. We will continue to pray and celebrate each day that you give us and use the knowledge and wisdom of your word to be better Christians and use your gifts in ways that demonstrate our love and adoration for you. We pray these things, trusting and believing in you, God. Amen. A parting word. We'd like to thank our worship leaders for this Lord's Day. Serving as our liturgist today are Elder Zettler Clay the Fourth and Deacon Courtney Trice. Our virtual musicians are Mrs. Sheila Wheat Harris, Miss S. Renee Clark, and Deacon Leela Bolden. And as always, we'd like to give a great shout out to our video producer and editor, Elder Anthony Meadows. Beloved, take this charge. Have courage, keep the faith, and rely on the strength that comes from God. 
Now may the Creator nurture you, the Teacher walk with you, and the Spirit strengthen you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Until we gather again in this virtual space, I am the Rev. Dr. Cecilia A. Taylor, pastor of Church of the Master Presbyterian Church USA, located in Atlanta, Georgia. We do hope to see you soon. Thank you.